Hello everyone, it's Melanie. I've been working on uh, a couple of journals over the last couple of days, and or few days, and I keep thinking to myself constantly, I keep thinking, I need to turn the camera on. I should turn the camera on. Uh, but every time I think that, honestly, here's what happened. I go through my head, I think, okay, well, I need to go wash my hands and fix my nails first. Um, before I turn the camera on. I need to uh, figure out exactly what I'm going to say. I need to have some kind of introduction and remember to thank everyone for their comments and all this kind of stuff. And then it just overwhelms me thinking of, I mean, all the stuff that needs to be perfect before I turn the camera on. So I just decided I'm going to try this. I'm just not, I just turned it on. So let's just see what happens. I am in the middle of something. I have been, I'm going to take this off. I have been working in a journal. Um, this one is one that I, another one that I made after I literally filled up the last one. Um, over the past few days. I'm sorry if I'm kind of... I just, I want to share this with you, though, because I feel like if you watch my last video, um, in light of, you know, things that have been on my mind, i stitch this. I wanted to keep my hands busy. And something about um, working in that journal that I was working in, once I started doing it, I just got hooked. And it's kind of unusual for me in the sense that it's not planned out you know, I the collage, the the collages, the the things that I sewed together are just junk, literally pieces of stuff out of my scrap bin. And I showed it to my mom yesterday uh, when I was at her house and. It's true, although she said it, I didn't, because I'm not going to say it, but that it's therapy. And I guess basically it is. That's what it, it feels like in a way. Um, so just thought I'd turn the camera on. I'll show you in a second when I finish this. I'll give you a little tour of this uh, this journal and the one that I made in the last video. And I'm probably not going to make this video very long. I really need to go take a shower and get dressed. I don't know what for, but... Just because. So these are the little, um, you know, the little ends you take off the, off your scrapbook paper. They usually have like, sometimes they have the name of the collection and stuff on them. Okay, let me show you what I'm doing in this book. There's so many things that I want to show you guys. Because... Okay, let me show you something else first. This, this video is going to be kind of all over the place. Let me show you something else first. Because I want to say thank you. Um, I want to say thank you for all of the comments that... 
So I want to say thank you for all of the sweet comments that you left uh, on my last video. I was trying to think of a way um, to show my sincere thanks um, for you taking the time to write such sweet comments. And the thing that came to mind is um, that I wanted to copy those. So this is my newest um, composition book journal and I just started it the other day. And I went through the comments on my last video and I copied, into, wrote them into my book here, um, every one of your sweet comments on the last video. And for me, the act of writing something down commits it to memory. Um, when I write something, it, I don't know, it just like solidifies it for me. In a, and I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. So this was the way that I could think of to thank you for all of these sweet comments is to take my time to go through and not only read every single word, but to commit those words, you know, to, to materialize those words um, in my journal. So thank you. Um, this, I, I sincerely appreciate it. I know that my mom also reads uh, all the comments on my, on my videos, and I know that she um, is appreciative of them too. So I just wanted to share that with you guys because I just, I don't want you to think that because I didn't reply individually to all of your comments that I didn't read them and take them to heart because I definitely have. I, um, I devoured every word of them. Um, and now I can read them in my journal um, whenever I need a little pick-me-up because some of you said some such things that were so true. Jenny left a comment that said, you know, we see things on the news, but when it happens to us, it's a whole different thing. And that's, that's so true. It's so true. Um, I mean, there's so many things I want to say about that. One of them being, see, I'm, I'm a fan. I guess you, I mean, I hate to say that. That sounds horrible now. I'm a fan of true crime. I read true crime novels. I watch documentaries on true crime. People's um, people's actions and the mental states behind them I find fascinating. Um, but when this happened, and if you didn't watch the last video, um, my mom and my family were at church um, here in Fort Worth or White Settlement um, Sunday before last when uh, that guy in a disguise pulled out a shotgun and killed um, two members of the church before he was shot. And uh, my mom witnessed it, my aunt and uncle, my cousins, my cousin's children, um, a lot of my mom's cousins. I mean, these are people that I've known my entire, you know, my entire life. They've all, they've known me forever. Anyway, long story short, I just, one thing that is inter has been interesting to me is that with other, with other tragedies like that, you know, with other, like I think about the shooting in Las Vegas, I'm online and I'm Googling, trying to figure out what was, what was this guy thinking? What was he, what was his motive? What were there signs that could have stopped him? Were there, you know, this time with this particular individual, I could care less. I haven't written his name down. I think I've said it maybe once out loud. And I honestly don't care because it is not about him. It's not about, and, and I didn't think that before until, until it, it's, until it's personal, until it affects you directly. You know, I could care less to read about the guy's motives and, and whatnot. And maybe part of that is the fact that he's gone. 
um, that he was killed and you know, he's not still out there going to do this again to somebody or, you know, anyway, I just wanted to share with you guys because I really sincerely appreciate your comments and I loved reading them, not only reading them, but rewriting them because that's how they kind of, you know, uh, solidify for me and go down in my memory. So I did want to thank you for that and share that with you that I had um, written all those, rewritten all your comments. So this is the book that I was um, putting the signatures in in the last video. And it, it's a textbook with a soft um, spine that I attached to the book with um, a chain stitch binding after I poked holes in the cover with my Cricut, or is it Cricut? What's that thing called? Oh, cinch. It's called the cinch. So I poked the holes with the cinch and then I stitched it on. And I, I did make a video um, of me doing this, you know, actually physically making this, but it was the video that I got the text message from my mom about what had happened at church that morning because my we didn't get up and we didn't go to church that morning. We didn't get up and go. And um, I just broke down in the video and I haven't wanted to edit or watch it. But what happened after that, um, I find kind of interesting. So I worked on this book on the 29th and 30th, on the structure of the book. And then after that, um, I just started filling this book with scraps, with junk, with I mean, literally things out of the trash. And my thought behind it was, oh, I just want to fill this book with, um, I don't know. It, you know what? I wanted to keep my hands busy. And that's basically what it comes down to. And, you know, my mom, my mom said it yesterday when I was out there at her, when I was at her, her, her house, she said, you know, it was therapy. And I worked on this book from January, I think the first, the, like the first through the fourth. If I was at home and I wasn't asleep or doing something, you know, with my family, I was sitting here at my desk working in this book. And it's mostly all scraps and things that were bound for the trash can. I wasn't thinking a whole lot about composition. Um, I was just thinking about keeping my hands busy and it kind of turned into something else. Um, it just turned into, I don't know, like a therapy exercise. It, it, I'm not trying to say anything with any of these collages. I'm not making any statements. Um, it was just about kind of letting go and not worrying about what things go together or what things are going to look like um, and just the act of doing it the the act of putting all of this together became the therapy and so in in four days January 1st through the through the um, fourth I worked on this journal um, like almost non-stop and um, it's pretty it's pretty full now. I also, this is for the, this is the first time I'd say I really truly feel like this journal is, is finished. Um, and part of that I think is, well, I mean, part of it is that the pages are full, but the other thing is that I kind of feel like it served its purpose in the immediate aftermath and you know, I wasn't there. I almost feel, I feel silly even talking about it as if I was directly impacted because I wasn't there in, in the church. I wasn't at church that morning. Um, but it's really scary when your family was, you know. But even though it wasn't, I wasn't directly there and affected, this still kind of became my avenue for sort of dealing with everything that was going through my head. And I don't want that to sound overly dramatic or, you know, 
um, literally, I mean, it just came down to keeping my hands busy. And the, the product of that now is this book. And now that I have done this, and it was very therapeutic on a lot of levels, I am working on another one. So that's what this one is. Um, so I'll finish flipping through here. Kind of, my mom enjoyed me telling her. I went through, I mean, I used sticker, I went through, I would kind of do something like I'd work on some collage until I didn't feel like I had anything else, you know, nothing was clicking. And I worked, pay, you know, flipping from page to page, back and forth, back and forth. And then, so I'd get sick of that, so I'd sew stuff into it. And all of the sewing, um, there's hand stitching in this book, and there's a lot of sewing. All of the sewing happened after the book was put together. And that's because the spine on this book being soft, I can fold the cover back on itself like that, and it's really easy, like you saw in the beginning of this video, to isolate this one page, and I can sew on this page while the book is finished. So all of this sewing that you see was all done after the book was put together, and that was fun too. Um, I did kind of, because I seem to work in color um, compositions, you know, that's probably the, the biggest um, focal point. But I did. I went through some stickers, and then when I'd get sick of doing stickers, I'd do some sewing, and then I would, you know, do some paint markers, and then when I got sick of that, I would washi tape some stuff on, and then when I got sick of that, I'd sew some trims on the edges of pages and things like that. And at one point I went through, I had this big box of die cut things um, <laughs> that are sayings and words and things that I will probably, that one says feisty, things that I will probably never so use. So I went through and glued a bunch of them though into my book anyway, because that's what this was about. This was about being um, just the act, the act of doing it. It wasn't about the composition. It wasn't about any of that. It was about the act of, of gluing the stuff down and keeping my hands busy. And so after I put them all in, I went through and lined through, um, did a, you know, strike through all the touchy feely words and, <laughs> and my mom really got a kick out of that, you know, um, cause that's, if you know me, in real life, that's that's very me. Maybe it's because I have, um, I left that there, shine. But that's because my daughter drew this. Um, <laughs> I have two brothers. I don't have a sister, you know. I've, I've got two brothers I grew up with. And they're definitely not emotional, touchy-feely. We just, we would beat each other up and, you know, that kind of stuff. I love them both dearly. Anyway, this is what I did for four days straight, and I really do feel like I kind of got to the point where it was finished, where it was, I've done what I want to do to it, it served its purpose, and it was about keeping me busy. And I was going to show you this too, my mom had given me a while back some of these hose supporters. I think these are probably from the 60s, maybe the early 70s. But they're the supporters that you would wear on a garter to hold your hose up. And she had seen it somewhere. I don't know if she saw it on YouTube or on Pinterest. She had seen somewhere where somebody used one of these as a closure for a book. So I, she had these two that she gave me out of the package. So I tried this one and all I did was on the back of the book, I made four holes, and then there's just four holes there, and then I just uh, stitched it with a little cross stitch there. And the elastic on these is surprisingly, it, it doesn't, it's not rotten or anything. And then on the front, I found a button that was approximately the same size as the little um, latch part, the little knob on that, and then I just loosely stitched a button to the front of my book and then I can just, it's such a perfect closure. I mean, I just, I love it, but I only have four of them. Um, well, now I only have three. So anyway, this is my Under the Midnight Stars book and 
I enjoyed making it and so after I finished it, I decided to make another one. So this one is another old vintage textbook cover. Uh, I made the same kind of spine. This is painted canvas um, from a canvas pad. Um, and then I did the same thing. I punched holes in the book with the um, cinch. And then I um, sewed it on, sewed the spine on with um, a chain stitch binding or just a, a chain stitch, it's not really binding. So this one I titled Busy Hands, and I went through my trash bin or my scrap bin again and just picked up pieces of paper and things that were, you know, to put them in the signatures. The other one has three signatures. For this one, I just did one signature. Um, I think in hindsight, I actually like multiple signatures better. But this one's the same way. I can actually fold you know, fold the pages back and fold the covers back like this so I can sew on the page. So all of the stitching in this book also has been done now that the book is, after the book was assembled and put together. It's all done. Um, and it's the same kind of thing. It's, there's no composition to think, you know, to speak of other than I do sort of like to put light colors together. Um, I'm not really trying to say anything with any of this. This is some stuff that when I was at my mom's yesterday, there was this, she had this copy paper box on the floor and I was glancing in there and I said, is this trash? Oh my goodness, she had some negatives in there, some map pieces, um, some coffee dyed paper because she, she dabbles in this kind of thing. This looks like something maybe one of my nephews had drawn. So I dug in her trash can. That's where I got this little guy too. Um, so I have just been gluing stuff in here willy nilly. And then when I, I went through my scrap bin and found a lot of scraps that were a certain, you know, that are smaller, like kind of had fallen to the bottom of the scrap bin. So all I'm doing is going through, attaching things, putting things in, I just sewed all these on. Once I do that, if I get tired of, oh, that would go good on that page. Once I get tired of that, then I'll find something else. There's another pink. So I'll put, um, I can change to something else. I can get the paint back out or I can look for some more stuff to sew on. I can do some doodling on some of the pages. And I like the act of working on multiple pages at the same the same time. That's been that's fun too. And these are oh what was that? I saw it. Oh yes, there's pink. Some pink and some more pink. I like this pink here. Sure. So there was one page because I was thinking about, I was actually thinking earlier before I turned the camera on, I was thinking about this activity as therapy. Um, and it made me think about what, I don't know. It just made me think about what's going, you know, kind of the things going through my head. And what I thought, you know, I'm not very poetic. I'm not very, I'm not super sentimental, things like that. But what I thought, if I could just write about, make a statement about what this, how I feel about this situation. Um, this is what I would say. And it is very, it's, uh, it's very cynical. And, but at this moment in time, it's exactly how I feel. 
And so I was going to glue that in here because this is actually kind of what I feel like. So this is just some paper from the scrap, from my scraps. I might have to put my glasses on. So if you stuck with me, I know this video probably doesn't have much of a point. I guess I'm just sharing my my current journal obsession, my busy hands, what I'm calling my busy hands journal. Um, and dirty, busy and dirty. But thank you for your prayers and your thoughts and your kind words. My mom's doing, my mom's doing okay. She's, uh, she told me yesterday she's, she's not doing very well when her mind gets empty. When her mind, when, when she's not actively working on something or doing something and her mind starts to wander, that's not really a good thing. So she's, like me, like, like me keeping my hands busy, she's trying to keep her mind busy. And so yesterday I went over, I gave her a, uh, some stuff for um, to make a quilt for Christmas. So yesterday I went over and we picked out uh, a pattern. She's going to do a sampler quilt um, that has nine different 16 inch blocks. And I bought her pre-cuts because I thought that would be a, that'd be nice, you know, not to have to cut all of it out. Um, so we worked on that. Um, it's all half square triangles if you're a quilter, which is kind of a step up. She did make a quilt. Um, my dad passed away very prematurely few years ago. I mean, it's been like, well, it's been like 12 years ago. And she made, my mom made um, a quilt for her and a quilt for each of my, um, my daughter and then my niece and nephew um, out of his old shirts. But it's just squares. It's just like, um, you know, six inch squares and then four patch of six inch squares. So she had assembled something before, but this time she really wants to go through the whole process and she wants to hand quilt it. I'm a, I'm a hand quilter. She wants to hand quilt. Um. Oh no, I cut the wrong, that's the wrong word. Oops. I just cut the wrong word out because I'm sitting here talking and now it's got glue all over it. I was going to say this is the, the. That's not what I wanted to say. Will that work or do I want, I guess I could do something light. Let's do this. So I had a really good time work uh, with her yesterday while we um, got her started on her quilt. She has um, an embroidery sewing machine and um, we did discover that it didn't come with a true quarter inch piecing foot and so in order to I don't know uh, the, it just I had to order I ordered her a, a piecing foot a true piecing foot because I think that's gonna be so much easier than 
moving the needle over and all that kind of stuff. So she probably won't work on it in the next couple of, well, till tomorrow. The new foot will come tomorrow and she can, I'll take it out to her. Um, but, journal's kind of a, the pages are kind of narrow. <clears throat> my, my sweet Yorkie, I have two Yorkies. One that barks incessantly and the other one that snores. <laughs> so the little one, my female, the smaller of the two. She is over here in the bed. Oh, there's the barking one. She's over here in this bed next to me, snoring away. I mean, literally, if you didn't know and you could hear her snoring from the other room, you might think it was a big, heavy man. But it's just her. It's just, uh, it's just tiny little Piper. I don't think she was such a terrible snorer before she before she died. She actually, when she had her space surgery a couple years ago, um, they were going to clean her teeth at the same time. So they had she they did her space surgery, and then they started on her teeth and they cleaned one side of her mouth, and then flipped her over on her other side to clean the other side of her mouth. And she flatlined, and they had to resuscitate her. And they called me, and the vet himself called, and he was like, you probably need to come up here. We're, we're, we're working on her, but you probably need to come up here. So they brought her back. So we, we joke with her now that she came back from the dead. She cost us an absolute fortune after that because we had to, she had a stay, two nights stay in the emergency hospital, emergency vet, and they actually, they actually put her in a hyperbaric chamber because um, they were monitoring her heart. It's very interesting. Anyway, she's our special gift because she died and came back. And now her teeth, so she only got one side of her mouth cleaned, her, her teeth cleaned. And now her teeth again are terrible. She has awful breath. Yorkies I think are notorious for, and she doesn't chew on anything. I mean, she, she actually even swallows her food whole, but she doesn't chew on bones or anything like that. So between that and the fact that she's a Yorkie and they don't normally have great teeth. Oh, oops. Let's see if this is gonna fit. Mm, gonna have to make it skinnier. Oh my goodness. It's barking so the mail probably the mailman probably came or postal carrier mine is a lady named Lisa is that gonna fit Should have started further over on the other side. <laughs> it 
still needs to be skinnier. Okay, I need a super skinny A. Super skinny. And I guess I don't have to cut the... Um, You can tell that's an A. Make it a little skinnier. So that, here's my one statement I'm gonna make. How I kind of feel about this right now is that it's terrifying to me and it's sad that this is the new normal, that this, those kinds of horrible tragedies that you see on the news, they're not just, you know, it's like, it's almost like um, we, you know, it's like the six degrees of you, you're eventually gonna know someone who's affected by stuff like this. Random, just literally random, evil, hateful acts. So that's, that's my new journal that I'm working in, my busy hands journal. And I'm gonna keep working on it. I may turn on the camera again. I'll probably upload this video, it's long enough. I may turn on the camera again and work on it some more. Um, but I don't wanna keep you guys forever. So, again, I really, really appreciate all your, your kind comments and thoughts and prayers. And um, I will, I will see you guys as I dig through my own trash here. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.